asutro kusha tamasi tanda nama kuramasi yeti. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I exalt your name. Lord, I praise your name. I give you all the glory and honor. Worthy is the name of King Jesus. Lord, you are the Son of God. Lord, you came in the flesh. You became mere men, a mere man. And you suffered a death that was meant for me. You took upon yourself my sin, my sicknesses, my diseases. And it was crucified in your body. You took my place, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. But on the third day, you rose in victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that because of what you did, your love and your sacrifice, I have been reconciled with the Father. I am called, I am now a child of God. I am a daughter of the Most High God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you bear witness to my spirit that I am a child of God. Precious Holy Spirit, this is your prayer meeting. We submit to you afresh right now in Jesus' name. We commit our minds to you. We commit ourselves to you right now, Holy Spirit. We do what you say we must do. We don't order you around, Lord. You order us around. And we say yes, Father. We say yes, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Riando satarabashikade. Zindramando rosebrake da bashe karianda da base te dedicata. Lin rondo moshaka da mahando rosie rebenda. Ndenda masokro hosha tramande kasiete. Rando munda de haraka dukura masienda la ramashe grande. Zondro sabrate ramase krahando shakete bahande. Lenda namasi anda ramakra mashekra tian doloroshete. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, thank you that we can be with you in relationship. Thank you that we can call upon your name, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your unconditional love. We pour our hearts afresh this morning. We pour out our hearts afresh this afternoon. We are grateful, Lord. So many have not opened their eyes this morning. But your grace and your mercy is new for us this morning. Thank you that your grace is sufficient for us this, this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Lord. I honor you, Jesus, precious Lamb of God. This is for your glory. This is for your glory. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. Father, exalt Jesus through this prayer. Exalt your Son. Glorify Jesus. Glorify the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In the name of Jesus, we are going to read from Acts 14. Greetings, beloved. As you are coming on, just prepare your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to make intercession for you and intercession through you. It is time that we pray for one another, that we stand in prayer for one another, that we stand in prayer for the church, that we will not allow anything 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 to disrupt us from spending time with the lord our strength comes from jesus it comes from the true vine if we are not prayerful if we are not abiding 
the enemy will have his way with us. So let us pray and encourage one another in this time. So I want to read from, from X 14. I'm reading from verse 19. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. Supposing him to be dead. However, hallelujah, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the very next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening, strengthening, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And saying, we must go through many tribulations. Enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Beloved. Beloved. I cannot imagine being stoned and left for dead that was what Paul had gone through and scholars believe and I believe he was dead but the disciples gathered around him brothers and sisters gathered around him and he rose up and you know what is so significant is that the very next day the Bible says Paul went to another city and he went and preached the gospel and made disciples and he came back to the very place that he was stoned and in that place he strengthened other disciples he exhorted them and he encouraged them to continue strong in the faith. And he tells them, we will suffer many tribulations, but enter the kingdom of God. I said on Monday or I think last week, we, some of us have become such soft Christians. And the reason for that is because we are handling our faith as, as, as if it's casual. We are handling God and engaging with Almighty God as if He is not great and mighty. I cannot imagine being stoned. I cannot imagine the the persecution emotionally mentally physically that paul and the other disciples suffered i know we are also suffering in this world i know we are suffering but our god is greater and our eyes should not be focused on that i know you are hurting but God is greater than what you are going through. And I am here. I am drawing around you as the disciples draw around Paul. Because we need one another. We do. In this moment when Paul was lying there dead, he could not pray for himself. He could not encourage himself. Therefore, the body of Christ was needed to gather around him, pray for him. And help him up but he got up he was resilient 
even in death. And when he got up there, he could have said, I'm not going ahead with this. I'm not going ahead with this. But I see this man having lost everything in himself, died to himself. And submitted his life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The very next day, he found himself preaching the gospel, preaching Jesus. And not only that, but returning to the same place he was stoned. And encouraging his brothers and sisters in the faith. We are not exempt from anything in this world we will suffer but our hope is different from the world's we are different from the world to some this might sound cliche because you've heard it so many times but I need you to wake up to the fact That God is God, mighty, great, big, strong. Nothing can dethrone him. He reigns forevermore. And that very same God lives on the inside of you. And that's why you have a resilient spirit. That's why you've probably made it so far. Because it's not in your own strength, it is in his strength. And even when you are not feeling like you are strong, you are strong. Because it's in, it's in his strength, not yours. And I need you to get this. It's not about anything else. But knowing that our trust and our life is in a God who is great and mighty. And it's not about the things that we can get or the things that we don't get. It's about entering the kingdom of God. We can no longer be casual Christians, soft Christians. And allow any wind and wave to blow us over and discourage us while we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. While we have brothers and sisters that can pray for us. Listen. First Kings 19. This was Elijah fleeing for his life from Jezebel. After having an heroic um, win killing the false prophets this man ran for his life because he was so fearful he even asked God to kill him and in verse 7 God says to him and an angel of the Lord came back the second time touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for you it is long it is long arise arise and eat and I want to skip a few verses I want to go to to verse 10 this is now and to verse 9 let me just read from verse 9 and there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with a sword. I am left. I am. I alone am left. He's just complaining. And they seek to take my life. Then God says, go out and 
stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold the Lord passed by and a great and strong mighty wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord but the Lord was not in that wind the Lord was not after the wind and the earthquake but the Lord was and the Lord was but after the wind came an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice you know Elijah wanted God to now have this big extravagant explosion of an answer to his complaints. And, 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 and God will not answer us the way we want to be answered. He's God. And he comes and he reminds us through this passage of scripture. I am not in the wind that you are seeking. I'm not in the fire that you are seeking. I'm not in the earthquake that you are seeking. In whatever you are going through, I am the small, still voice that you are ignoring. You are ignoring, you are not hearing because you wanted this answer a certain way. And you, all that you are doing, you are complaining and complaining and complaining and you are not hearing the small, still voice. The one that has been with you through the fire. Through the disappointments and the rejections and the and the and, and 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 all the bad words that people have been giving you, he's been there all the time, and you want and you seek something else. Listen, some of us need to wake up and stop the sorry, um, self pitying Christianity. That we've dug up for ourselves. We want applause all the time. We want people to tell us how great we are. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for... No one owes us that. The only one that deserves a thank you and glory and honor is Jesus. It is Jesus. And I know maybe this is a hard saying. This is something difficult to hear today. But some of us need to hear it today. Get up. You're not supposed to die now. You're not supposed to give up now. Your journey is so long and you're allowing the enemy to kill, steal and destroy that which God has put on your life. Get out of that self-putting put that you are in. I am praying and interceding for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. If you can just get quiet and listen to his small still voice. He is the spirit of resilience on the inside of you. It is him, the Lord God, Holy Spirit, our precious gift from the Father. He is the one that makes it possible for Christ to dwell on the inside of us. I don't know who needs to hear this. But God is telling you, get up, feed, eat. You've, you've been eating on the wrong things. You've been feeding on the wrong things. Now you need to start eating from God's word. Feeding yourself from God's word. Drinking from him. Drinking from him. You are weak because you've been drinking on the wrong thing. You've been eating the wrong thing. The wrong thing has been your source. But the Lord has never given up on you. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. That the word of God says we do not have a high priest that is not in touch with the feelings of our infirmities. Where you are, Jesus has been. He knows exactly what you are going through. You know how many people say, you don't know what I'm going through. There's nothing new under the sun. Let me tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. 
Don't let the devil trick you in thinking that you are the only person suffering in this world. You are not. But there is a great help. When you cry out to him. When you truly surrender. When you truly cast your cares upon him. And no longer exalt your own motives and feelings. When you truly make it about him and not about you. When you truly give up. And give over to him. Give up. It is time to give up. Father, I pray. That your sons and your daughters, if they hear this word, that they know how much you love them. This might be a hard word, but it's not a hard word because you don't love us. It's a hard word because you do chastise those you love. And sometimes we need to hear the difficult things that some might not tell us. We need to hear that we are not supposed to die. We're supposed to get up because the journey is long. We need to be asked like you asked Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you still doing here? Haven't I told you to move? It wasn't because God is not a father, but because he knows the purpose and the blueprint of your life that he will not allow he will not allow you to stand in your own way and yes some of us maybe feel so alone and and and, and lonely but it is just because you've not met Jesus face to face because we are never alone So I'm telling you in the name of Jesus and I'm making a prophetic decree. Get up. Come out of that self putting put in the name of Jesus. Get up and eat. And move into your purpose and your destiny. In the name of Jesus. You have been there for too long, way too long. No one is coming for your rescue except me, except Jesus, says the Lord. No one is coming for your rescue. I have rescued you already. Jesus has rescued you already. You don't need anyone else to rescue you. Jesus has done it on the cross. And Father, I pray that they will just experience your embrace, your love in the name of Jesus. They will experience just your overwhelming power. And I pray that the spirit of resilience, the spirit of authority and power will be activated on the inside of them. I pray hope instead of hopelessness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray the psalm over you as well. Psalm 31 In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. 
for you are my strength into your hand i commit my spirit you have redeemed me O lord of truth i have hated those who regard useless idols but i trust in the lord i will be glad and i will rejoice in your mercy for you have considered my trouble you have known my soul in adversities and you have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy you have set my feet in a wild place have mercy on me O Lord for I am in trouble my eye waste away with grief yes my soul and my body for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing my strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away I am a reproach among my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am like a broken vessel, for I hear the slender of many. Fear is on every side. While they take counsel together against me, they scheme to take away my life. But as for me, I trust in the Lord. I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me from your save me for your mercy's sake. Do not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak insolent things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is your goodness! which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you. In the presence of, your, of the sons of man, you shall hide them in the secret place of your presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in the pavilion from strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications. When I cried out to you, Oh, love the Lord, all his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. All you who hope in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 31. I'm not going to add anything to that. Thank you, Jesus that you are making intercession on behalf of your children. Thank you that you are calling them back. You are calling them back in Jesus' name. You are calling them to a higher place. Some you are resurrecting. Some you are resurrecting. Dry bones come alive. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name and I give you glory and honor. And I am thankful that you never, never give up on us. No matter what we have done, you pursue us relentlessly in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you. And the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace, beloved. 
and remember Jesus loves you and Jesus is Lord. Bless you.